come over and check out a project that the Southern Christian Leadership Conference was just taking on. Mm -hmm. At that point, I had never heard of Selma, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Now, fortunately, while my mother was up for my ordination, she mentioned a valuable factoid that we have an ancestor who is buried here in Selma. Great, great grandmother. Wow. Uh, they'll probably stop by and wait. So. Uh, so, anyhow, I came down. My mentality was that of observer. I am going to observe to see if there may be opportunity for Unitarian Universalist involvement in this new project that Dr. King is taking on. Okay. My partner in this, Ira Blaylock, a few years older than I, uh, he had been a U.S. Marine Corps captain uh, stationed in uh, Florida when at about the same time he discovered Unitarian Universalism and pacifism. And as he eloquently put it one time in the theological school discussion, the Marine Corps is a hell of a place for a pacifist. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, Ira resigned as a Marine Corps captain, went to seminary, was also a beginning minister. Uh, and Ira, Ira dropped the observer mentality faster than I did. And he took part, I think we arrived on a Tuesday evening. On Friday, Ira took part in a demonstration. And Excuse me, this is at the Bobby Show. Thank you. you. Sorry we were running so late. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, Ira was arrested. Uh, the, the group was arrested, booked, and released on personal recognizance. Apparently the jail was full. So when they announced that there would be another demonstration, Point, I'm not sure whether it was Monday or Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday following. But okay, okay. It, people who live in Selma, when they demonstrate, they're risking everything. You know, obviously lives, injury, but also home, job, job all sorts of relationships. I'm from someplace else. I have this airplane ticket home in my pocket. Uh, or much less risk, I, I need to do this. And besides, sounds like they're doing catch and release. We marched from here down to the courthouse, protested that they now were using an appearance book. If you're black and you want to register to vote, uh, you, you can write your name and address and so on in an appearance book saying you've made an appearance and when the two or three days a month that the uh, voter registration was open, uh, you could appear and presumably get toward the front of the line. But we were protesting the appearance book. And they arrested us, marched us in, booked us, marched us in the courtroom, tried us. The trial was essentially over before a lawyer appeared to offer some defense. I don't remember him saying anything. Uh, it was a very fair trial. The, the judge performed multiple functions. He was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you need to think about that. It might be very efficient. Uh, he was judge. Uh, he was uh, a prosecution witness and an assistant prosecutor. Uh, you know, prompting if they forgot something. Uh, I guess he asked, well, I don't remember his asking if there was any defense. Uh, <laughs> might as well not have been. Uh, anyhow, he called us up individually for sentencing. We'd been tried en masse. <laughs> Talking about a fascinating law system here in Dallas County in 65. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he tried us as a group. He did identify, yes, this is, this is the mob of people I saw outside on the sidewalk. Uh, that was his part of the prosecution you know, testimony. Uh, but he called.
called us up individually for sentencing. And I did mouth off. <laughs> Most people were smart enough not to. Uh, I did cite that the president in his State of the Union speech had spoken of the need for all Americans to have voting rights. I spoke of the fact that I was not an outsider with an ancestor buried here in <laughs> Dallas County. <laughs> good, good. I like it. Hey, you're in the South. It works. It didn't do anything for me there, but uh, it's it's a factor. Uh, and the judge had a question for me, which suggests that they had acquired a certain amount of information about these two people who had wandered in from out of town. He asked if I preached civil disobedience to my congregation in Boston. Fortunately, just a week or two before, I had, in anticipation of a trip south, spoken about the uses of nonviolent civil disobedience. So I could say, yes, Your Honor. And here was my text. <laughs> it didn't alter my sentence. We were all sentenced to five days in jail, $50 fine, fines not paid, be worked off at $3 a day at hard labor. Uh, we were never asked for any labor, hard or soft. Uh, we were never asked at the end of five days if we wanted to pay the fine. Um, actually, we served seven days of the five-day sentence. Is math different in Alabama? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> White math, maybe. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. that's, that's how I got here. Thank you.